we have carbon. Okay. I need to get ready. One second. Um, this is the district advisor board meeting of September 1st. The meeting is being recorded and I'm trying to look for the statement. Um, it's on, it's on the minutes too. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm looking for. <laughs> and it's at the uh, bottom of the agenda. Yeah, percent of chapter 20 of the acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner, via Zoom on the webinar ID 824-1448-3355. No in-person attendance or members of the public will be permitted and public participation in any public hearing conducted during this meeting shall be by remote means only. So, so can we let the attendees in? It's like Dee Shabazz and Craig Meadows. Yes. Yes. There so, we go. Sue. Am I not receiving the same link as everyone else as a panelist? No, you are. It's all one lump email that I send out. Right. That's the one I used and I entered in as the audience. I don't know why. But D, I just, um, I got two emails from Sue and I, I used the link in the second one and entered in as audience. So I left and then used the link from the first one and came in as attendee. Okay. You know what yeah, I, think? I mean? I think the email, right? So Zoom, it generates an email when you're at it as a panelist, when the meeting's scheduled and it says, I always just search by panelist and then it shows me my panelist links. Okay. <clears throat> wow. Um, so let's start, let me look for the agenda. Um, so the first item on the agenda is to approve the meetings from the previous meeting. Um, we have, um, I know they were uploaded to the website late. Um, um, so I want to make sure. So one is that we need to revise the, um, the agenda of August 18th, the revised version. The minutes. The minutes, right. yes. Thank you. And then uh, we also have the minutes from August 25th. I don't know if everybody had had time to look at them. Um, so um, I would propose that we start with the August 18th minutes. That's okay. Yep. Yeah. Good. Um, now our Minute taker is not present. So do, shall we assume as last time that he's gonna do it based on the recordings? I'm assuming he's planning to come. I had emailed him because I had sent and uh, I think because of, but I'm assuming he's planning to be here. Okay. But yes, he can he can take the minutes off the um, recordings too. Okay, so um, I have a couple of comments on the minutes, but I'm gonna open the floor. So whoever and do we take public comment first or after the minutes? In the agenda is after. Okay, I can switch for next time. Um, there we go. Um, so does anybody have um, any comment on the? minutes of august 18 before we put it for a vote is approval i have a couple of small comments okay do you want to mention or sure so on page two where it says b constitutional rules regarding number of precincts i just think those two bullet points should be switched the order they should be switched it's con very confusing the re reading it the way that is but if we switch the orders it will make um that clearer I believe. Um, and then in point C in census data, it still says 41,000. It needs to say 40,000. Are you? I had updated the minutes, like as we talked about last time, because Joe hadn't been here. And then mm -hmm. um, 
And I had also just added under information just as somebody had taken notes like during our meeting on the 18th. And so the minutes that I had that they were uploaded and they were uploaded into the um, folder, like I guess probably a little late, unfortunately, but they um, they said they were like underscore updated. So I don't know if those are the ones that you looked at, Peggy. Or I, they are not the ones I looked at. I'm not <laughs> okay. seeing those. Yeah, I got those from Tracy around what 11:30, and I put them up there at 12:30. Well, so yeah, I had sent them we to Joe. On Joe. I had yeah. waited. Yeah, I, I yeah. didn't want to like preempt Joe, but then Joe had classes, and then I was just like, fine, just put them up. But I'm I'm still not seeing them. Where I. They would be in the oh, I see them now. I see them now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So sorry. All right. I didn't see them before. <laughs> okay. So oh, we can always wait if like people haven't seen them or whatever. But. Okay. I have one comment, uh, Tracy, on yeah. page two. Okay. Bullet four, item A. Oh yeah. It says right. the population twenty twenty of forty thousand two hundred sixty three. I thought it's thirty nine thousand. No, but I think um, hold on. Uh, let me see. Uh, the updated figures show that Amrit has a 2020 population. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Hold on, I'm just gonna pull them. I think that I had put both. I think I put both. So maybe, um, let me. Sorry, no, it says, it no, says, I, I understand. Hold on. Uh, yeah. <sighs> okay. Let's see. All right, so I'm sorry. So you were looking um, item four. Oh, right, right. Eight. Sorry, you're right. It's 39. That's correct. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, but anybody else had time to read them? Should we postpone again until next time? You know what? I'm good to approve. <laughs> okay. Okay. Somebody seconds. Second. Okay. Um, so the motion is to approve the minutes of August 18, pending the changes suggested by me. Um, yeah. So that was your only change, is that correct? Yes. Okay, great, thanks. Um, so I'm gonna make a roll call. Um, Craig Meadows? Yes. Peggy Shannon? Aye. Tommy Parks? Aye. Tracy Safian? Aye. Mahek Gelani? Aye. Irene Hovne? Aye. So the motion passes to approve the minutes pending the change. Um, Great. And now, did anybody, before we start discussion, did anybody had a chance to look at the minutes from August 25th? Or we postpone this discussion until next meeting? I'm fine with either. I mean, yeah, likewise. Yeah, I'm and, uh, and, and I, also our minute taker, our writer wasn't isn't here <laughs> in our meeting. So I looked at the minutes and they look fine to me. Okay, I have one comment. Um, if my computer collaborates. Uh, there was one comment and then a clarification on the notes. It was as if it was the um, that I had requested the change on the previous meetings to reflect that the phone number was not my personal. Um, that was not my personal phone number. It's the town's phone number. So it was at mainly um, ordering. But that was uh, just a minor comment. I think it could be okay. Um, so, does anybody move? To I approve? actually have a I have a tiny change also. Top of page two, um, the last sentence. Another announcement was reminding certain members of the board that they are missing open meeting law and conflict of interest receipts. A few members need to complete these documents. It's not a few members are needed to. It's like every member needs to do it. So. Okay. So, so does somebody want to make a motion to approve the minutes pending the changes suggested? Sure, so moved. Second? Aye. Second. Okay. 
So the motion is to approve the minutes of August 25th, pending the two suggestions uh, made. Um, I'm going to make a roll call again. Uh, Craig Meadows. Aye. Peggy Shannon. Aye. Tammy Parks. Aye. Mahek Gelani. Aye. Tracy Safian. Aye. Irena Hovne, aye. So the motion passes and we have approved the minutes. Um, the second item on the agenda is for public comment. We have allocated 10 Sorry, minutes. Sorry, so somebody is going to want um, Joe know about it, the updates? Yes. Okay. I would send him an email to let him know the updates. Um, I know I see that there are two attendees and one has raised the hand. So if they want to make a public comment. You know, somebody might need to unmute. I mean, yeah. I'm asking to unmute and she's in the room. So please uh, say your name. <coughs> Yeah, no, we see it's Adrian Terizzi, so I, we see okay. the Adrian, but we, you're muted, Adrian. Yeah, sometimes you can right click her to um, like make sure she's unmuted. Or it sends a prompt and says like ask her to unmute. I did, I did. Try it again. No, I know she's had problems before. Is there a way of uh, communicating through chat that she would put her comment via no. chat? No. No, it has to be uh -oh. set up to begin with. It's not. Or if Adrian called in, she can do um, star nine, right? And star six to like unmute, but either one. And Adrian, if you want to email, um, you can send an email and I'll see it. We have a public comment at the end of the meeting as well. Or if Adrian can just get into the meeting, I guess. No? I don't know. Um, but and then can you, you, can you raise or your hand if you are able to listen and you would like to make a comment at the end of the meeting? It's before. Uh. I think we should move on, but yeah. appreciate that if Adrian finds a way to contact us and would like to make the public comment, we can do that. Yes. yes. And before we do that, can I <clears throat> just make sure I do this correctly? I'm not going to remove permission to talk. Correct. Yes. Correct. Okay, there we go. I want to kick her out. Okay, good. Okay, if there's no other comment, we're going to move to the next item uh, on the agenda. Yeah, and it's those that is announcements. Does anybody have any announcement to make? I, I have a, um, a request, which I wish I had put on the agenda, but I didn't. So I'm gonna put it in here as an announcement, which is that given that we're often close to not making quorum, I think it would be helpful for Irena and I perhaps to have everybody's phone number so that if somebody we believe was gonna show up like Joe um, doesn't, we could then just shoot them a text and make sure it wasn't just a forgotten meeting or something like that. So. Um, I can give the distribution list to Irena and okay. then you can do what you want. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Great. That's great. That's a great idea. Yeah. Tammy Parks, you have a comment? Um, so I'm, I'm looking at the 9-1 um, the materials and under reference materials for all meetings, 
the first two items that come up, the census 2020 official data for Amherst and then for Amherst plus stuff, again, is that can, it's tiny, tiny data that's sideways. Michael, if you could, I, I'm just pointing that out. Yeah, I think we need to remove that for the reference for because it's anything we put in here, it automatically converts it to a PDF. So it's this gigantic Excel spreadsheet that gets automatic. It gets created. It gets turned into a um, a PDF, and it's just it's useless. So I yeah. think we, I think we'll remove it from here. That's the the way it looks on my screen is it's just yeah. lines. <laughs> it's just tiny lines. Yeah, there's no, no way so, to not have PDFs. Like that's. I don't think so. I'm not 100% sure. I think a lot of stuff gets convert, auto converted. When you load something in here, I think it gets converted to PDF. I'll try it. I can try it right now and see what happens. Well, so like Sue with the minutes, does Joe give them to you as PDF? You're no. going in and out, Tracy. Um, no. Yeah, can yeah. you hear me? Yes, I can, I can. Um, I've been getting it different ways, but I, I always put it on as a PDF because we don't want it editable. Right now. Yeah. Yes, Tommy. Just one other question. So I'm I'm starting to play with this big data matrix. And you know, I have this uh, thing that tells you what all of the you know P00100 means, but it doesn't tell you what the other things mean. And so there's a whole lot of blocks that I'm just wondering if there's a uh to yeah. well. So what I, the reason I sent out my spreadsheet is yeah. I hit geography. I didn't delete, just hit them. Like I hit those columns and a lot of them are things. So there's a few like the municipality, the county, whatever the town. And then there's the census tracks, census blocks, but you can hide a bunch of those yeah, no, I did They're all that. It's, the, it's just yeah, things, yes. it's things like it'll say like one race, and I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's it, it incorporated in some something else on there. Um, I I actually hit a whole bunch of them, so I don't see them right now. But the headings, is there a place that just has like a uh, an index of the other headings other than just the uh, race ones? Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe you could show, share your screen temporarily. Okay, let me, yeah. um, let me just unhide. I mean, I don't know okay. if we're on that section yet. So no, I'm not in the section yet. Can we? I have one more announcement, and then yeah, maybe yeah. we dive into. The okay, data I just thing. I just didn't know if there was like a key like this someplace that I could download, but yeah. So okay. I wanted to announce that there are, I, there were two communications with the state. One was after the meeting last week, I sent an email requesting one map with 15 precincts. And I also asked them about what's the procedure, when do we share a map with them so that to get feedback. And I haven't heard back on that email. Um, I was going to ping them back this week. Uh, the second email, and the second email is on the uh, package is a general email I believe was sent to everybody in every municipality. And my take on that email is that uh, for maps generated by the state, we are the lowest priority. We come the last. Um, oh, I thought we were second to last, but, um, but. <clears throat> yeah, but we can, we are not at the top of the queue. Um, so I think we have to march on with creating our own maps and then see what it compares. Um, so those were my announcements. Okay. Anybody else has any other announcement? Uh, yeah, Tracy? So um, the press release went out at the end of last week and it was published in the Indy and then I know piece in the Gazette. I also got an email this afternoon that uh, Brianna from the town sent it out as a press release too. Um, so it is getting some attention. I don't know. I don't know whether anybody will apply for the opening, but but maybe we'll start getting more people at our meetings. Great. Uh, Tammy, you have uh, your hand up? No? Okay. No, not, not until we dive into the details. Okay, great. So if there are no other announcement, um, let's 
keep on moving with the agenda. I, I'm going to ask if somebody can keep tab of the time every now and then uh, to make sure that we are yep. on schedule. Um, and thanks, Peggy, for doing this. Um, the next item is our standing item about discussion of rules and regulations that the board wishes to, to establish. And I wonder if anybody wants to change on how we are conducting the meeting. And if not, we continue and we leave it as a standing item. Okay. The next item is the packet material. Um, this week, the packet material was light, um, the emails. And uh, I saw that um, Mike put one map, interactive map with the difference in population that was not directly on the package, but that was at the front. Um, and maybe now we could discuss, Tammy, um, the spreadsheet as a headway before starting to discuss maps. Okay. Um, so Tammy, if you could share your, um, just your, are you referring to the spreadsheet, the version that I sent out with the headers? I don't, I don't know. I didn't, the spread, did, is yours attached to the bottom of the, of, of this booklet? <coughs> what I got was this booklet. I don't, I don't see the spreadsheet that you sent. I did look for it. And the spreadsheet out on, well, so, um, so Mike, oh. I think it was Mike and he had put um, all the data. It had been on the, um, it had been on the district advisory board page. And um, and so that was the whole data, like with all of these columns and everything. So and then, so what I did here is see all the data and see how there's all these titles here. Yep. Okay. So what I did was I uh, hid these, so, and then I wanted the block number, so I hid these. I'm guessing that Allen is the population. Um, no. no, so oh, I would hide not, all of these. Water, I would hide water. everything until column Z. Yes. But um, um, those are all related to just like the geography. Also, you do need in addition to the block, you also need to show the census track because Amherst has, I believe, seven census tracks about and the block numbers repeat in different tracks. So it's not a unique identifier to have block alone. Okay. All right. So, so like this title, a water. That's, that has a, that's just a geography related to the water. So you can hide that. You can hide you can that. Hide that yeah. too. So I, I, what I was asking before is, is there a key to those? Because I wasn't sure what to take yeah, out. Yeah, in so, that original, um, Mike's distributed it, and it's in the reference material. It's for but all not the in this thing. Right. So that version is just an excerpt of the okay. original file oh, that Mike distributed, stuff. which was like 220 pages. Okay. And I just created an excerpt with the population. Got it. Got it. Because so, I didn't think everybody wanted to look at the 220 pages. Right. So what I did was I, I had this block and I, I get what you're saying about the other information that I need. It's, but what it's I the did, track. Yeah, you yeah. need to have census block and track. Okay. So what I did was I did a total population. I don't know what one race means, uh, how that's counted, but I did white, black, Indian, so, Asian. Right. So I went through each group and it actually adds up. When I go and, and do totals on the columns, uh, it is what the population of the town is. And if I add certain of the blocks together, I do come back up with this number. So, so I was just trying to make them. Yeah, so I had, um, right. So I had sent around, I sent an email at the end of the, I'm sorry, over the weekend, actually, I think on like Saturday or um, just where I had added the columns, like all the other columns too. Um, so there are the two, did you ever, did you see my email at all? I did. I just, okay. I saw the email. The first yeah. part of it was the booklet. Well, in the first, and it was like the P1 data and the P2 data about what they mean. Did you see that? Um, yeah, I see the race subcategories. Yeah. So that's what, so one race refers to people who fall into each of those one race categories. Yeah. So the, the, then, thing, the thing is, if I were to go across my totals, 
and I and I added up all of these, it's more than the total population. Well, one so, thing is that you also have Hispanic. Yeah, I got Hispanic. So the P2 yeah. is Hispanic and Hispanic is a different. So a Hispanic and not Hispanic would also add up to the population. Right. Because they're but, considered differently by the Census Bureau. Right. So, but is two races within all the others? Two well, if you more, look at like, so within? right. So two or more would include anybody who's two races or three races or four races or five races. Right, or but are races they counted elsewhere is what I'm trying to say. They, so, so if, if someone is uh, black and Asian, are they no, here, so what, and no. here and so, here? So what happens is with the one race category, there's a lot of subtotals within all the columns. And so, for example, you have people who identify as one race, right? And then within the one race category, you have people who identify as one race who are African American, or one race who are, you know, Caucasian. Okay. One, one race who are. Okay. I, mean, All right. I guess I'm like, na a Native American. Okay, Canadian that's fine. or Native that's fine. Alaskan. And so all of if you have added up all of those together, you would get back to the people who are one race. Right. So and but then, the reason the reason I set up the data like this is that what I was trying to do is I was trying to go through here and find where there were, you know, more population of you right. Know, no, of course. Yeah. So that that's the whole point of why I was trying to set this up so that when we go back and look at blocks that we have this information. You know, I'm trying to put it side by side with the number. What's what would be helpful to me here is to have the current precinct. If I knew the but, well, that's where uh, we but, need to um, fill some of that in ourselves. But right, I don't know. Mike was maybe going to do the geography and see if he can match precincts with the census. Right. Well, that's that was my idea. Is that if I knew what precincts these were, the blocks were currently in, mm -hmm. then then we could we could group them by that and and check the numbers and then and then kind of squish right. the numbers up and down um yeah. so there's also the well you do need to go back so i really do urge you to include the track as okay. well okay do you or, know what do you know what column it is it would be one of the introductory columns or also okay. there's an identifier that includes the track and the block together just because you'll it's confusing otherwise so so the other question i have is are there 425 blocks or there are, are 423 census blocks is my understanding and my correct. please correct anything i don't okay and because, then so and, and i'll also just mention with that that there are 96 of those census blocks have populations that are equal to zero um so for my purposes when i was looking at the spreadsheet i just hit those and there's some other census blocks, as Mike has pointed out, that aren't zero, but they should be zero, like if they're a parking lot and things like that. But just a little bit because. Yeah. yeah. OK, so what was the other column you said? Track. The track? It's, the, it's column C. Yeah. So actually, yeah. So what I actually show is, and this is maybe just me. Do you see that yeah. GOID 20 yeah, column right. E? That is everything. That is that is state, county, tract, and block all concatenated together into one that is the true unique identifier okay, for every it. single, all 423 census blocks. blocks. Okay. That's what I use, but I can also understand what Tracy's saying, just looking at tract and block. Um, oh, and why does it matter? So what is tract telling me if this is the block number and there's and I have 423 of these, what, do, what is this adding to it? The, the tracks are composed of blocks. So the track is a bigger unit. Okay. So the problem and, is that the okay. block numbers, the block numbers repeat in different tracks. Not so all I, of them. But so some maybe of them I do. misunderstood you before when you said that there were a hundred. It wasn't a hundred blocks. There's a hundred tracks. Is no, there's right? like seven. There's seven. There's tracks? about seven tracks. Okay. And what are the? What do those do? So those are just a larger geography, and then yeah. the, that geography is broken up into census blocks. For example, like there's one track, it's mainly UMass, and there's one track that's like, say, mainly Hampshire College and things like that. All right, let me just go back to. So, but as Mike said, you can also use that one that combines the track and the block and everything. Yeah, but I, okay, now I'm starting to see the value. I just didn't want to hide it all. I want to get rid of these. I also got rid of all the extra zeros. Um, Oh my goodness. Yeah, I always wonder how you can population with five zeros. 
why this person comes yeah it's going to be a very small portion of a person <laughs> um okay i think too because maybe sometimes they extra, you know they interpolate extrapolate like based Earth. on the missing data so anyway okay so if i go here and i do ascending blocks i mean track then this you have to do you have to do a sort of c yeah. and d together do c and d together yeah right. they they're sorting together so i i sorted the entire thing so all the races right. are sorting as well so the whole thing's being sorted what i was going to do is go down here so this our stop it so this right here is one block that's i'm sorry one this is one track and these blocks are within this one. Correct. That correct. That's correct. correct. Okay. And you'll you'll also see like the very last one that you have there. What does that say? Is that five thousand eighteen? I what is the block number? I can there? barely see this. That five thousand eighteen. Uh, the one, the last green one. It's I think it's row um, ninety six. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Five thousand eighteen. Yes. So there's a five thousand eighteen in this census tract. There, there's potentially a five thousand eighteen in the census tract right below that you just sorted on in. 820400 there there could be another one of those block numbers in that same in, in a different track. census tract okay, so okay because the track can have more than one block in it no the correct. tracks do have more than one block yeah, yeah. the track i mean yeah. the, i'm sorry so there can be so there can be in in block number of 5018 that could show up in more than one track you're saying yes no they're, the they're, the they're name, actually different, yeah. The name 5018 5, can show the block 5018. Yeah. The name can be track one 5018, track two 5018, yeah, exactly. track three 5018, but geographically they're different. Uh, they have the same name, they well, have they, the same yeah. block A, but they can be in, uh, so it's, uh, it's I track see. one okay. A, track two A, track three A, but they're okay. geographically different. So they're not really the same. It's like a, yeah, they're, the numbers are just repeated. Okay. That's why, that's why um, Mike was talking about using the other identifier, the GOID. Okay. I guess what I'm trying to do is make this so that this data is like possible to pay for me to understand, you know, and be able to play with, because if we're going to be moving numbers around and adding them back and forth. Um, so let me just go try to do what you just said. So I have a question regarding uh, the procedure, Mike. Uh, we, for us from the Excel sheet is very, we cannot know exactly where they are physically located in the map, except mapping. Um, so is there a way when we are creating the maps that pulls out which blocks they are, which track and block they are, and then we can search for those on the spreadsheet and yes. then look at the profiles? Yeah, I've been working yeah. on that. Well, I've been, go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. I've been working on that, um, trying to get it, the searching working properly. And I'm, so this is help. This is actually a really helpful discussion. So I think we should be searching on that GOID. That would be the easiest thing for me to build, okay. um, for, for you guys to search and find things like that. But also I'm, I'm trying something. I'm looking on my interactive map here. So, so when um, I look at the interactive map, Irene, so when I look at it, right, if you kind of right click on like any of the blocks, it, does it, too. it pulls up and it pulls up the data, including the GOID. So that's how I've been referencing. Yeah, and no, I understand. But yeah. since we're going to be grouping maybe oh, no, of census course. blocks, then we want to look at the average of each precinct, how the profile looks right, like. Right, right, right. Yeah. We want, we want to make sure that we can have the, because it may be completely different and random. But I, I've just been looking, I mean, I guess I've just been focusing more on the map because, because yeah. when I right click on each, it like pulls up the number and I've just been like focusing on those clusters. Okay. Instead of trying to do it as much off of the spreadsheet. Yeah, the spreadsheet I don't think- so many, The spreadsheet has so many rows. <laughs> I think the spreadsheet, I would not use the spreadsheet as a starting point to define the precincts because we don't know right. where geographically 
if they're connected to each other right. or not. Yeah. Well, and I had asked Mike last time, it sounds like he's working on it because I ran into that same thing. And I said, well, I want to know where this precinct is right. or something. And right. if there's a way for us to search it, even though we don't have like the full ArcGIS, that's like okay. awesome, but. Um, so I was going to propose that we we have, it's uh, 636, 5, 536, sorry. And that I would suggest that we start working on the maps um so yeah so that we have at least one hour uh, to work on the maps before we start wrapping up so uh, go ahead sorry so um there are different possibilities and i think that we had discussed last time um whether to start from umass and move outwards so i think we can try that um and then start looking for consistencies uh, Peggy, you have uh, your hand up. Yeah, I'm sorry. This this actually relates to the last thing. It, it sounds like it would be really helpful in the spreadsheet to have which precinct each line of those each of those 327 um, blocks that matter fall. Is that right? Like if we had a so I can do that. I could just go through line by line and no, assign. No, don't do that, no? Peggy. You have no. a way to do that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I was hoping last time that Mike said he could like match it, but it right. wouldn't be perfect for like I know around UMass there were some significant changes in the boundaries. Right. Um, particularly precinct four and ten. So I think that okay. some of it won't align. Like okay. yeah, it, ninety percent of it will be perfect. Ninety percent of it will will take minutes but then okay. those last pieces that tracy's referring to those will be the complicated ones where it's like okay where where do i put this number do i put it in this precinct or this precinct or do i put a note that it's split by the two um so i i did not add this to my to-do list last time but i did add it to my to-do list this time so okay. awesome thank you so um so, so okay. I just had a com a question a comment. So at the last meeting, right, we had talked about where to start with the map, and Peggy made the good point about starting where we have the densest population, such as at UMass. So I did start playing with some of them around UMass, um, and I think some of the I have some sort of draft draftish sort of precincts based on that, um, just because there is such a density in some of those housing clusters that they do a lot of them sort of become their own precincts or close to it. Um, uh, so I'd be happy to kind of share some of what I did. And a, a couple of the comments with that is there is still that really large, I, I don't know, maybe we should get into the map. But one thing I did find is that some of them, because some of the um, some of the individual census blocks are still pretty large, including that one that used to be like the 4200 at in Southwest dorms, that's now 2,500. That's still like a pretty large block and it would be nice if it was split up <laughs> um, for our purposes, like for the next census maybe. Um, but that it does get hard, like it's easy to go over the 5%. That was what I experienced. Um, but I did find two, I was thinking too about how one way to do some of them is to add in some non-student dorms into each of the precincts and i think we'd want to do that as much as we could anyway i mean because one concern i have is if we have precincts that are predominantly students or even like student rental housing like in terms of the functioning of our government like how who would run for those seats and so on um i mean i would hope that students would run i just think that they won't run as much um, so and and I just had one other comment, just like with some of the geographies, and again, maybe this is getting to the weeds and we should look at it, but some of the way, so the Census Bureau, when they create those blocks, like they they split it up on these like central lines and, um, you know, streams and so on. But sometimes what they're doing is they cut like a, through properties or they cut through a cluster of dorms. Like I was thinking of like, for example, like say Puffton Village. So there's actually two census blocks, and I guess we can look at that when we get to it on the map. But what they did is they created that they treated that Puffton Village driveway as a road, and they went through the center line. So part of Puffton Village is in one census block, and part of it's in another census block. So both for our purposes, like in terms of a precinct, but even 
And it, it sort of makes sense because property boundaries can change, like properties can change owners and they can split up and stuff. But at the same time, it sort of doesn't make sense because it's all like one complex. But mm -hmm. anyway. But uh, Peggy has uh, her yeah. up and then I have a comment, Peggy. Um, my only comment is I don't actually think we have to worry about precincts themselves as being um, entirely students because precincts are not electing anybody. It's the That's districts. True. We Absolutely. want to make sure that the districts mm -hmm. are representative of the pop the population in the town and also do not you know break up communities of interest. So um, I, I think we have to less worry less about the precincts than the districts. So I agree. I agree, but at the same time, I think we have to be careful when we are creating the precincts. We, we still need to look far ahead of districts because the districts have to be joined, precincts have to be joined. And we have, we, yeah. if, if we create, I don't know if I. Right, like if there's some that then, aren't contiguous, then you can't you, join them later as. You can um, not join them later. Yeah. So I think. Right. One of the decisions that we're going to have to make is right now, um, the districts, I was looking at the districts, um, right now, District 3 is only in this, to the left, very, District 4 is at the center and District 5 is all the way at the bottom. Maybe one possibility is maybe down the line, maybe aim to have a, like a radiant distribution center of mass so we distribute the students. So we have the districts going around. That's a possibility, but when we are creating the precincts, I think we, we still need to think about continuity in between districts and give us the more options when we are creating the districts after mm -hmm. Um Craig, you have your hand up. Uh, I was gonna say something similar to that, that, that we don't worry about the districts at this point in time, mm -hmm. that we, sure. we look to see how we can fill in the, the precincts uh, and then look at the districts and see if there needs to be adjustments for the precincts before we do the anything as far as districting is concerned. But if we try and tackle both things at the same time, we're gonna be going back and forth and back and forth and not make any decisions okay. for quite some time. And we don't have that much time. Nah. Tracy? Um, so I just had a question related to the districts and you know what has to be reported back to the state. So. I understand that we need to create the the precincts, you know, by the deadline. Do the districts also need to be sent back to the Commonwealth by that no. um, October thirty first deadline? My understanding is that no. I think we have just to send the precincts, but I'm guessing that the town would want to know the districts as well. Yeah. I mean, but just I guess just to keep in mind in terms of our time frame, like as we work through the precincts and then. You know, we could leave a few weeks for the districts, but I wasn't sure exactly what we needed to have done. So, okay. thanks. But the problem is that we we need to have a draft of the districts because if not, um, we cannot at that point we cannot change the precincts. No, right, of course. So make sure that the but, numbers balance. So the, the the my point about the districts is that we need, the districts also have to be within five percent. Bingo. Mm -hmm. yep. So, sure, so exactly. that's that's the the major key issue because if we have precincts that are all on the lower side, all continuous to each other, we won't be balancing the right, districts. Right. So, yeah. from that point of view, we need to go do doing a check. Like potentially, can we build districts that I have within five percent afterwards? That's the that makes sense. It just just in terms of the deadline. That's what I was thinking yeah. of, like what we need to. But essentially that okay so um mike how do we go about do we want to start with tracy's uh, suggestion and mike it, goes plotting it, them in the map it might be a good idea um so i am i started setting up a, a a map exercise so that we could work on it together in a group um i can't remember did we decide that the map that we're going to start working on together is that we're going to have 15 precincts in that. Is that what we're yes. going to try? Are mm -hmm. we completely throwing out 10? Is that correct? I think Pretty much. <laughs> we, as our first try, we're going for 15. Okay. If, if we find that 15 is impossible, then we will revisit 10. Okay. All right. So I started setting this project up and one of the first things it says to you is, hey, how many how many precincts are you going to oh, have? And I got okay. stuck there and I'm like, okay, I forgot what we decided. So, um, 
but in the meantime, while I'm setting that up and adding different layers to my map here, we can start looking and talking about Tracy's map. And then by the time we're done looking at that, we can probably take Tracy's stuff and then I can interactively draw it in here and we can start seeing how other things would shape up around it. I I mean, I guess the question is, did anybody else kind of like create precincts too? So I don't want to kind of take up everything, but. I fooled around with it, but I think Tracy, let's just do it. Okay. Let's just take what you've gotten. All and right. We have to do something. So, so let's so, do it. All right. Yeah, yeah. So um, I started with Southwest. So Mike, are you, are you able to pull your stuff up now or do are you send up oh. your projects? Maybe I'm, why don't, why don't, don't you, you share your screen if you can? Or oh, do you have well, a map so or something? I, mine is all on paper and oh. like oh. numbers oh. because I don't have interactive GIS on yeah. mine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Give me just a second. I kept like printing up. it out, but I'll tell you, I, so I started with Southwest um, and that largest precinct, which is the 2512. And that's basically a precinct. I mean, there's not that much we can do with that. And that is within the 5%. I, so I suggest at this point that we just leave that alone. And then I took the other um, census blocks in Southwest and all together, right, they add up to be too much to be precinct by themselves. So I split um, some of the ones on the north end of the Southwest dorms, like the Emerson house, the I don't know, I can't even see some of them, the Thoreau house and another one. And then I also added them, I connected them and I added them in with Commonwealth, the Honors College because Commonwealth Honors College is sort of often a little island by itself, like surrounded by non-residential. And so the Commonwealth Honors College is um, 1,367. And then I added um, to that like three from from the Southwest dorms, from the north end of the Southwest dorms. And then that came out to a total of 2609, which seemed like about right. Um, And then I took the south, the four four blocks on the south part of the Southwest dorms. um, And I added those together and that was 1800. And then I also added them in like with some of the residential areas around there. Um, and then that came up to be 2742. Um, and then I went over to like a different part. I went over to like the central residential dorms and the Orchard Hill dorms. And so I came up with like a few other ones. So again, I ran into the same sort of thing there that, um, uh, so with the Orchard Hill residential area, that the three, there were two in Orchard Hill and one in central residential area that came out to 2255. Mm-hmm. And then I, oh, I added two more there. So that came out to, oh, so one thing with that is I actually, it came out to 2792 and that was actually 6% and not 5% over the, the like average, if we're assuming that we have the about 2620 per uh, precinct. So the one thing is, when I see the state's instructions, it says that it's everything's supposed to be within 5%, unless you can like justify it. And I thought maybe the 6% might be okay. <laughs> so because, have- because the reality is that the dorms are so big. I mean, so those are sort of, and the state has recognized before that the dorms are really large. So I have a question about that. Um, around the 26, uh, the 2,500, census block the continuous blocks around it which one is the smallest one i'm sorry can you ask your question again so because we're gonna be we we the prisons have to be continuous right so if yeah. if it's within six percent one way to justify it is if any of the continuous next to the what all the census blocks that are surrounded right. would take them above the 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 plus five percent then that's a justification that's there's no way we can satisfy it within the census blocks and we need to request a census block split are you talking about that so i'll say that when i was looking so you can see in the center there's this 25 12 block and I really do think that the next time the Census Bureau does this, they should split this up more because it right. is a little bit of a pain 
because basically you see this one here, this um, the one right to the south of it that's like kind of surrounded, right? So that one, like you can't, it's sort of an island <laughs> and so, you can't, you know, you have to make the precincts contiguous and- So, um, so uh, Tracy, what I'm saying is yeah. the 2,500, Right. The one next to it, um, if you don't put the layers, maybe we can read the numbers. Yeah, the sorry, next. sorry. Um, the, I don't know how to describe it. Next to, to it, the that's, east, to the east. Yes, to the, to the east. I, yes, that's so, so, our 50. So we could add 100. Correct. We could potentially add them. I, I guess I was just trying to focus on because I thought that whatever this main road is, Sunset is sort of a main street. I had just split it. I had just left the 2,500 by itself as a start. Mm -hmm. So that would be, so with 15 precincts with our population, the ideal number of people per precinct, meaning the average would be 2,618. Right. So that means that 2512 would be a hundred less than, than what the average would be. Right. Um, so. so I had from, that, from that point of view, we could, Tracy, we could do the whole block, we would be, here the the one that the three to the east of the 2500 that would get us slightly above the 2600 right yeah. so but, but i guess i was thinking because i know some of the other ones they came out to be over 20 like they're in the 2700 so i just left the 2500 alone at this time mm -hmm. okay I mean, this could be, I mean, to your point, this could be one that we look at like changing the boundaries because there is some flexibility there. I had just, I had just focused on like, these are student precincts and, and that's why I hadn't gone across sunset with it. But I did go across sunset, like I added those into a different precinct. Right. So what I'm, what I'm going to show you here, and this is my, so. I've, I've experimented and I've played with this, but I actually haven't done it but um i'm going to take this block right here okay and with this tool i'm going to assign it and you see how it just got a little oh. arrow around it it okay. it sure. now it it is i'm starting to build our first precinct okay and what we can do then here where is the So there's a little dynamic report that can oh. kind of come here and kind of go with it that that shows well, where is so so and can we turn off the precinct layer too please oh yeah we can so, I, I just turned it on there as a point of reference so my my point of making it a little bit larger mm -hmm. physically is because then we can have more connectivity when building the districts if it's so narrow, it has very few neighbors for afterwards to connect with the districts. If it's a little bit wider, we can then have some flexibility how we're going to connect with the neighbors. Otherwise, we're going to be stuck with uh, all the whole district of students. Right. But I'll, I'll tell you that I put, I put those two blocks, the 54 and the 53, I put them into another precinct, which also includes the dorms. Yeah, but so. then we have, we end up, we're going to end up with a district that's only students. No, 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 not only. Because, that's like, two, two because to your point, the sunset, the stuff on sunset is not just students, it's also um, residential of people who aren't students. Okay, well, let's. Anyway, but I, I think Irena's point about yeah, making no, of course. the um, districts that are, or the, I'm sorry, the precincts that are very, very heavily one population like students, having them have a lot of points of contact with other possible districts is a very useful point. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, okay. so watch even, if it, even if there are census blocks that have zero, we can try, we can use yeah, that. Right. Exactly. No, of course, I realized that we had to do that with this 2,500, that's the only way to make it work. Right. So, all right, so aside from, if we wanna add those two, that's fine. So, so watch what happens down here at the statistics in the bottom left. So right now we have this one selected and then we're gonna select, oh, of course, it's gonna freak out here. It go, it, that, it went up to 2566 and then, I don't know why it's doing that, but it's gonna go up again. And I'm okay. going to assign all of those to, and now it okay. grew 
that's fine. Now it's at 2619, which is one above the ideal, right, that's fine. <laughs> the ideal number. So, um, and so what was your, I'm sorry, go ahead. So Mike, potentially I have a question. The, yeah. the one that says two on the north, to the northeast. So there's one block, census block zero, and the other one has a two. That's wrong. That's a that, parking lot. That's, that's the um, visitor center, <laughs> it's wrong. That's the visitor center. So the Lincoln yeah. apartments are. All that's, right. That's the one where 94 is. Or 94. Okay. And that is actually, if we were to turn on the layer that shows us uh, players, places that were undercounted, doesn't Lincoln show up as undercounted? No, Lincoln is where there's going to be the 600 bedroom. Oh, OK. It's going to be Mass Ave and Lincoln. It's going to be like some of the parking lots. Yeah. OK. OK. So. So can we go back into Southwest and I can mention yeah. like my other ideas? Sure. All right, so then what I did is I took this, um, so we wanna call it like precinct two. So I took the precinct that had um, the 777, I mean the block that had the 777 right here. and the yep. 214 and the 251. Mm -hmm. And then I also connected them with the Commonwealth College residential areas that are to the north, like across Mass Ave. So these, the two, yeah. The 598 and the right. 769. Yeah, yeah. And then you'd have to, I guess, include the zero in there. The zero and the zero here, yeah. So basically up like this. Right. Um, yes. All right. I'll try that. You're probably going to get a bunch of, there's something going on, but I'll see what I can do. Oh, I think it got him all -ish. Yeah, it did. 3,164. Is that what you had, Tracy? Okay, wait. You. I think you added more than I did. Um, I didn't include the 550. Oh, you 550. didn't include the 555. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. And also there's a little zero precinct in there that I don't know if it's showing up when you zoom out. In between the 777 and the 555, there's a zero. Okay. Which is wrong, as you know, I think. Yeah. That's Kennedy House, which is actually a dorm. Right, right. Is that the one, one of the ones where the 555 should be there or something? Or? That could be. Yeah. So that puts, it, puts this at 2609. Right. Um, and then I don't know going up. So if you go up north with that one, Mike, I don't. So there is this other zero too. I don't know if it makes sense to make this zero two. to add the zeros there. I think I will leave the zeros. Yeah, as, that's fine. Uh, as afterwards, we can use them sure. as yeah. connecting okay. points. Right. No, that's true. Absolutely. So let me assign these to precinct two. Okay. And okay. then. Um, okay. And then I did the south part of Southwest. Yep. So um, so we know that the on the um, left hand side, the west, the, the 12 is wrong because that's also right. a parking lot. Right. And then um, and then so I took the precincts here, which were the like the 412 and the 595 mm -hmm. and the 263. Yep. And then I added some of the zeros to the south across Fearing Street. Mm -hmm. And then I went over and I connected them with um, with some of the ones, I think I did it over to the, wait, 203. Did you include the 12 that's over here on this, on university? Oh, I did include the 203. Oh, so I, I don't know, we can or not, I guess. I don't yeah. know. I mean, it's actually a zero, right? So, but yeah. But, I mean, you say it's actually a zero, but the census believes that to be a 12. So we need to include right. it. No, yes? it's true. Yeah. So, I mean, we may know it's wrong, but they don't. Right. And they're not going to allow us to just. No, know. it's true. I think we, we can request changes, but um, it's a whole. Right. I guess we'll put the 12 in there then. So did you, how far and, down off and of then I went, did you go? So then I went to Amity um, Place. So, I went all the way this 203. I counted the 203. Hang on a second. It's, so I guess you'll do the 12 oh, let me go and the this. zero and the 203. Yeah, let me unselect here.
because we were going to be we were building a different a different precinct here. So you with the, with this precinct, you went all the way down to Amity Place, which is yes, the two which is right here, the two of three, right. But then and then I also went um, east, like into that neighborhood that I really included was like about. included like sixty one yeah. and fifty one. And even over further because the numbers were pretty low. Okay. I included most of the area up to like, say, I don't know, what is this, North Pleasant Street, I guess, or? Yeah, North Pleasant uh, Street. In the middle of town? Yeah, pretty much. It's, I always I included that. I included that, like. So I, I'm going to make a suggestion. What if instead of, because if we, my concern is that if we move east, we are blocking for afterwards the entrance to the, the center portion. We, we are forcing like a division north south. What if instead of moving east, we move um, south on the map? Instead of moving? Instead of moving, like Tracy saying that, was saying that she had to move. Well, um, I get, yeah. So what I had done is I was trying to do it, I guess, based on sort of neighborhoods and how. Amity is a dividing line. Like I live off of Amity, it is sort of a dividing line. And so that's why I was using that as um, to connect, but. Yeah, it totally makes sense. But I think Irene is suggesting no, that we course. have more flexibility yeah. if we go south. Oh, that's fine. I don't know. We can, if that's we, we can do it afterwards, uh, Tracy. Oh, afterwards. of course, yeah, yeah. Afterwards, we can do it with the, with the precinct in the districts, yeah. we can join. Mm -hmm. that. True. But I think we might have more flexibility on how to build if we go. Sure. Sure. No. Okay, so we're at we're at only eighteen twenty five now. Right. So if we can add the two o three, add the two o three, and when we say and we I don't want to move east, what what should be the I dividing line should, of not moving east? Let, well, then let's can we include the fifty one and the sixty one? Yes. Okay. Those. And then. That is 26. So I'll say that, five. I mean, I had been focusing on the university, so I did include this whole, the whole kind of a bunch of the polygons to the um, east of Lincoln. So that takes us all the way down to Northampton Road. And then if we added that, this little block right here. So how much yeah. do we have right now? 2605. Oh, okay. Yeah, we could do it that way, which is actually the current precinct because I'm in that precinct, it's precinct four. It goes all the way down to Route 9, Northampton Road. So if I assign selection, so it's very faint. Maybe I can turn on colors here, make it a little bit more visible. The transparency put dark. Yeah, I don't know. So there is no dark, transparency. It's there was just... a, no, there was a darker line, a slider at the bottom. Oh, yeah. Hmm, weird. I'll figure it out. Oh, hey, it did turn dark. So oh. So that has 2611. Okay. So we have sure. three, pre Tracy drew three precincts, right. 2619, 2609, and 2611. And then, and then this, this column right here shows the deviation from the average. Right. Or so it's, this one is plus one. The second one is negative nine. And the second one is, the third one is negative seven. And then, and then I drew some over like for the other dorms too, like Orchard Valley. Which stuff. is up. If we want to, if we kind of want to focus on those population dense areas which I think we sort of do, but this is a starting place just because they're so big and you can't do too much else with some of them. Right. So, so in Orchard Valley, I added the, um, so the one, the 1265 is one precinct yep. and I attached that with the 391 mm -hmm. and then also the 599. Yep. Um, and then, so one thing is if we, so a couple options with that is we can also then go to the east and add the 143 and the 394 maybe. Yeah. 
but that is um, like to the points that people raised earlier that's basically all dorms and i didn't include the 114 because that would make the number go over right so if we look at So that's an area that in the past um, was one big block. It was it was a bigger one, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and they split it. And they divided it up. Yeah. <clears throat> so how much yeah. is that right now? So then. So this is twenty two fifty five right now, but I have not added right. the one forty three or the three ninety four or the right. one fourteen. No, no, no. So no, you can't add the one fourteen. It will like <laughs> it goes way too high. So if you add the one forty three and the three ninety four, you get to twenty seven ninety two. Which is the six percent, but I just I was just playing with it. Yep. So this one is plus plus one seventy four, which is six percent. Yeah. yeah, but it's hard because of the big buildings. <laughs> so the question is, can we build the because the the state with that was one answer that we got is the five percent is a hard stop. Is right. there a way of combining these ones with major lines that does not get to the? But when I read the, it didn't actually say it was a hard stop. It just said you would have to justify it. That's what I read in the email that they sent you. Yeah, but we could. What if we would take instead the instead of the one forty three, we can put the one fourteen, and then we are on the safe side. And the one twenty. Well, then the 120 you're over too. But I mean, the thing is, I guess, yeah, I mean, we can play with it different ways. I think one thing with that 143 is you are going to want to group, you're, if you do that, you're going to want to group it to like the north, like in north, go up north pleasant. Yeah, I but think, I so. Yes. You would not have this and then go. And then go up to like Puffton and everything. You have to get past all the zeros at the center of campus and then right, go up right. that way. Yeah. Or move, or move east. Say it again. Or afterwards, we're going to have to combine it with East. Right. Right. So well, what are we think? What are we thinking? So just to be clear, the the precinct, this one that as John, is this entirely dorms? Yes. 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 So this would be our second precinct that is our, our third, third precinct, the third, third precinct, precinct, which is entirely students. Correct. Well. No, there's there's oh, one of right. one of them that we just threw is not entirely students. You're right, entirely it's, students, but for that 100 residents. Right, okay. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. it's um 90 percent students. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, and even and even the residential homes that are mainly rental, they're mainly students too in this area, right? So yeah. Okay, so can I ask a practical question here that maybe we don't have to worry about this, but in terms of polling locations and trying to distribute um the voters evenly at polling locations when we make a precinct that is entirely students or almost entirely students and we know that a lot of those students aren't voting either because they're just not voting or they're voting back um in their where they came from does that is that a problem for the town like should it we is. be should we be considering that also but i think that right you could have one well I mean, I don't know, Steve could speak to it too, but can't you have, I mean, you could have a voting place like for the district too. Well, if we if we were identifying 15 precincts and we need to outfit 15 precincts, we can combine the location for a couple of precincts, but that means we do need 15 tabulators, we do need 15 ballot, all of that. And um, so, you know, let's say, let's say we put three precincts in one location, like the high school, um, and two out of those three precincts are students. And, you know, you've got three outfitted precincts in one building and hardly anybody shows up. So yeah, these are considerations. Um, but I think we're going to have that issue anyway, because if we have 15 precincts, we have only 2,600 people per precinct, and there are these clusters of students. I mean, it was pretty different when we had 4,000 people per precinct. 
right? Because then we would always have like a neighborhood as well. Yeah, I mean, surely this is gonna, yeah, with 15 precincts, this is gonna be an issue. I'm just wondering whether we should, in yeah, addition kinda. to trying not to have precincts of just students in terms of whether that throws off the representation, should we be worrying about it in terms of voting practicalities? Yeah, I think we should because then some precincts are gonna be, it's not evenly distributed the number of people that show up to vote, right? Um, in some precincts that are more permanent residents and they're gonna be more people well, voting in person in principle. Um, this is all guesstimates, right? We cannot assure, right. yeah. we cannot assure. But it's true that we would, ideally we would have precincts that are, they have a mixture and they all have a different, the same mixture, mm -hmm. but because of location um, and how the things are clustered, it's almost impossible. Um, I think the prison one is the way just draw is a clear example. That's impossible to, to have a good mixture with uh, right. permanent right. residents. Um, the second one that we drew, it gets to that point that is incorporating is a mixture. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so the question is, how do we move forward? The ones that we were just talking, potentially we could group them. If we move east, we could have more of a mixture. We could be splitting the dorms. Right. And then there's, uh, there's or south, you can move south, but yeah. yeah. So, or even Commonwealth College. I mean, you could group Commonwealth College, like going up north Pleasant Street or something. Yeah, Craig has his hands up. I'm just wondering, other than um, other than the location of where we vote, does do the precincts really make any that much difference anymore? We vote by district. We don't vote people by precinct. But Susan, no, but, but no, Sus we vote by precinct. We vote right. by precinct. Well, we were by location. We do, but not not. We don't. We don't have precinct representation with the way we did it for a town meeting. No, right. But we have so consequently, it really doesn't make any difference. But Sue still if needs we have the clusters staff. of students. Sue we, still needs the staff precincts. Yes, we still have. Well, to that I understand. Yep. But if yeah. we can, if we can combine precincts for locations of where where the precincts vote, then then it it seems as though we overcome that problem. Yeah, as long correct? as you don't put three precincts that are all students in one location. Yes. Yes. Well, right. and we have and we have yeah. fewer elections with the charter. Right. Exactly. We, we mainly only have one election a year. So and, and that is not by pre except for the location, it's not really by precinct. So if we if we have all students in a few different precincts, as long as we combine those precincts uh, with non-student precincts for districts, then it it really doesn't make any difference. Well, it, we're still yeah. okay. Go ahead. Hey. Dean. Well, except and and Sue uh, and others maybe could uh, offer some counsel on this, but uh, by Massachusetts general law, we have to do precincts. And the districts are a creation, really. I mean, when you come down to it, are a creation of Amherst and the charter. Um, so we still have to, by Massachusetts law, uh, divide up these precincts because that's what's really mandated for us to do. That's Correct. right. But, but as long as we put those precincts, it, we, if we have, let's say, four student precincts, if we take those stu four student precincts and combine them equally with the into different districts, then they they don't really represent their what they're voting for is still the district, which is the creation of the town. We don't we don't vote for precinct representation any longer. That's that's typically for most everybody else in the state, but it isn't for us. I think for Sue's point is that the mechanics of voting, right? It's 
Her concern is for the mechanics of voting that she still needs to staff 15 precinct locations, even though they might be yep. on the same spot. Each mm -hmm. one has to have independent right. personnel. Each precinct has to have independent personnel. Is That's, that correct, Sue? That is correct. That is correct. Um, there are cases where you can share a warden and a clerk, um, depending on the numbers, but uh, we do staff each precinct individually. I, I staff a warden for every single one of the precincts, a clerk for every single one of the precincts, checking people. But, but we are going to have that no matter, yeah, yeah, I mean, no matter what we do. If we have 15 precincts, we're going to have 15 wardens, 15. Yes. Right. Yep. Exactly. I mean, but, so. But the turnout is what I think you're talking about, Craig, and you're right. right. It's, it's, no, it's if true. you if you decide to make District One um, three precincts that are nothing but students, you're going to have a turnout that's much lower than the other, you know, and you're exactly. going to have whoever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the issue too is I know like it are mainly students in terms of like where they vote, like. I mean, the past, not hearing you. Sorry, in the past, sometimes we've had people voting um, on campus, like we have had a uh, sub, sub precinct station and uh, precinct 10 at on the in the campus center at UMass. But the problem is that if it, or there's a large student turnout, then the precinct is like almost empty. So, so basically, we're it doesn't really make sense. I mean, if we have, if we have a student loading, if we have a voting location on a campus, um, then we wouldn't consistent voting location. Like we'd have to change it for some elections versus other elections because some elections would have no turnout at all. Yeah, and, and it's not so. the responsibility of us to actually propose them anyway. That's no, of course. So, yeah. so we don't have to worry about that. But but I think we are sort of stuck with the fifteen precincts. So yeah. So I have a suggestion to move forward um, yeah. with these items. So with these uh, precincts, I prefer the configuration that Mike is showing. Uh, he just changed instead of this one is still. Yeah, that's fine. Because then one thing that to note is, um, for example, to the north of the campus, even though they are not dorms, from North Pernescent West, that's mainly, I would say 90 or 95% that's student housing. So now if in this configuration he currently has, it has about people. So we'd want to get up to around 26, but then we're sort of splitting, we're starting to split up neighborhoods if we, like where would you add the other to get up to the, Hundred or two hundred. So, how many more do we need? Uh, and we're down. Are... We're negative one twenty nine from the average right now. So, I was, I was just as you guys were talking, I was just playing. Um, yeah, no, of course. I mean, uh, you, can add, you, you add... can add the sixty six. That's true. Add the sixty six, and then we're still negative sixty something. So, I mean, you Wait, can is, add did the you one. Add the sixty six already? I no, can't. I have not. Oh, okay. I have not. Yeah. But we can uh, be a, we can be under a little. I mean, I think the sixty six makes some sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then yeah. you could try to we could try to create a precinct like in between the two other precincts, like yeah. in the middle area, I guess. Like that. And then it could go up to the north. And then if I. So you're adding the 66, right? Add the 66, yeah. I'll have this fixed by next week. <laughs> so that puts us at negative 2%. We're 2.5% two, two okay. down right. on, the, on the average. So then could we maybe look at having um, a precinct? I mean, this isn't, we're trying to focus on the clusters, but I guess if we were filling in some, say from like fearing, and the middle section in between the precincts and then going north like through campus um so like starting at fearing and going right. up yeah well tracy that's mainly um student rentals or no but i'm saying well we're because well, one we, one option would be are you saying we could go you could start there and go down is that what you're saying uh, i would leave that portion to go maybe to go down to use as a connection point 
And because if we go north, okay. So the 356 but, north. Yeah, I was just trying to think of where you're gonna connect in the Orchard Valley, Orchard Hill area, like the 336 and the 394 and the 143. Like we're because, gonna need to, we're gonna need to connect those to a neighborhood. So yeah, where because, would we want to? We not we need to connect them up that way. Yeah. So we yeah. So if you going. go if you go northwest, that's students. If we go northwest, it's students. But we yeah, still so, we, we still need to connect up there, no? Yeah, through the UMass. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, Mike could draw that. He could kind of come up with something uh, but that goes up. Wait, there. wait, wait. Because at the same time, then. Uh, then we need to make sure that the honors college precinct goes south we're going to have the problem that we're going to have a precinct a district with two so you could put the honors college if we want to split up you could put the that honors college pre, that's 3500 people so we could somehow uh, yeah i mean you could connect that to some other precincts i think i'm, so, I'm sorry i'm going to backtrack Maybe what makes more sense is go from fearing, connect that one to fearing. We have one central one there. Uh huh. From fearing, that's. Well, yeah, Jeez. Mike should start to add it up because those are some small numbers. It's going to take a lot to get to 2,600. Let's see so, how much. So we're talking going fearing north. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we and can expand do you, both sides. Now, do you want to put Commonwealth College in there? Or do you, do you want to leave no. Commonwealth College in the other one? Uh, Peggy has, Peggy has her hand up. Thank you. Yeah, I just wonder. I'm like I'm noticing that these. Um, well, first, Tracy, thank you so much for for fooling around with this. Um, it's really helpful to have a starting place, and and I like a lot of the decisions you made. Um, but I'm one. I'm noticing as we're looking at this map that our precincts have a sort of north south um, bias to them, or or they're they're. They're longer north south than they are east west, and it feel I feel like we're getting and we're ending up getting forced into certain directions. So I'm wondering, what about, for example, this last one that we did precinct four at the moment? Maybe we don't make it that shape. We may instead we bias it more east west. So okay. for example, three ninety one and four nineteen um, and two sixty one and ninety three. You know, so so that direction so that we have more options for where what we do with that fearing street area um so, so what it's an idea so peggy where would you so looking at that orchard hill neighborhood what would you take out to kind of go in i think i would take direction? out the one i think i would take out these lower so, ones the, i mean the 114 and the 120 and the 66 um uh, and possibly even the 599 i don't know but, i mean i haven't i haven't done what you did in this no. neighborhood um, but I just feel like we're getting I, yeah. forced to. I think we do need to move like east and west. I right. agree with you. Um, yeah, but whole... I don't think you. I don't think you want to do that on you know from East Pleasant Street working. I mean, working east, east west. I east, think you're better off going north south there. I mean, East Pleasant Street is a big divider, you know. And if yeah. we're looking at like the pre the districts later, so keep in mind. Big... Keep in mind, like uh, the north, the northeast corner of town and the southwest corner of town, there aren't a lot of people there. So, you know, they're the shape of those areas is going to be really strange. So we got to we have to make sure that we don't pinch, you right. know, that area too much at, if we move east west. Um, it's up to you guys where we do that, but yeah. um, that's something we have to pay attention to. I know yeah. if we look at the states map that they did 15 precincts like the northeastmost precinct was was gigantic it was yeah, it, it was very, very large yeah it was a very it came all the way up to cushman and then like looped all the way down to near echo hill it was very large in order to get to the plus or minus five percent so but we can do whatever we want here if we want to deconstruct precinct four and move it east we can try it it's okay all right so let me take back my comment and can continue. <laughs> so, I, so what are we talking? So I guess, um, I mean, I know it gets really complicated. Do we want to try to do anything with like the fearing area going north and try to create something? I would say let's try, let's start with the fearing going north plus 
the doors, the central portion, and then we see whether we and, which and, direction. And do we want to leave the um the Commonwealth College? Yes, we. Yeah. In that. For now, let's Southwest. leave it. Okay, that's fine. Let's for now let's leave it, and then we see. Yeah. Okay. Because we're gonna to have to go through many iterations. <laughs> it's very complicated, and the five percent is very not easy. Yeah. So. Plus the three thirty six. Oh wait, wait, wait! I made a mistake. And so then you're basically headed up towards Puffton, right? Because to get the to get up to the numbers, we're gonna need like some density. Or it's south. Yeah, I think we should try going north. But... Yeah, just going from here north. Right. Going from fearing north. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess we could look to the north and just see how much density is out there. Because, you know, yeah. if we wanted a neighborhood that's also got owners, you could go south, like to McClellan and Halleck and mm -hmm. Cole, and like over towards the high school. You could do all that. I, I, but... I see. I'm I'm already thinking but maybe I'm thinking it um my concern is that we have this person that is very small here at the center that is only students and is surrounded with we need to when we build the districts we need to make sure that that one is connected to right. precincts that have residents so if we were to move this one only to students so we can incorporate some of the 336 and 394 but I would like to include some um, some that are not uh, some well, properties that are not students or student rentals. So then we have some connectivity there. Because if we go to West right, Boston, right. it's going to be again a district a prison that is mainly students. Well, we could go from that one that area that Mike's highlighted. You could go like south, like towards the high school and college and i mean there are it is some rental and it's also student i mean it's both it's so a mix my suggestion we, was to go both north and south we would we would just need to make sure that what's happening on the north west corner in terms of like the numbers what the numbers look like up there going i mean the north precinct the north like precincts get pretty big too like north of campus. Yeah. So um, this is only 442 people in this area that's purple here. Can you include uh, can you include the 336, 394, 143, those dorms, plus the just for continuity, some of the zeros and the 31? Yes. Yeah, yeah that sounds. So then there's, we, a, there's a zero in the middle, but let's ignore that for the time being. So then if we go north from there, like when we get to the 142 and the 30. Oh, so actually that's another dorm. Some of yeah. that's a dorm too. All, all this is, this is still the main campus that like, this is Eastman, the roundabout is like right, right, here. right, right. Yeah. So, so what if I, is, what if we add in the, um, the ones that are south of Eastman? Like the 245, 307, one, yeah, those. Those. Tracy, if we add those, then the other prison, the prison one is surrounded by precincts that are mainly students. Um, so then we don't, we. Yeah, it's it's going to be hard we to are, make districts. It's <laughs> going to be hard to make districts. Right. Um, so unless we connect unless we would make a, a district that would go right we south, need to go down that need, way yeah we would have to make we are forcing ourselves that this one would either have to go connect so the precinct that we created the precinct three is a mixture as that's my understanding right yes that one. yes but then we get into so then one would be exclusively students or mostly students 90 percent students or 95 percent students one is a mixture and then we, we are forced to go south with mainly um an area so, that is more residential so all right so 
Can we, maybe we want to go up to that cluster with the students that Mike was just up at, that the one with, um, yeah, so that cluster. So what if you go north from that cluster and you connect that, um, so, I mean, this was one that I was sort of looking at is so, if you take the ones, if you take the ones that are south of Eastman, the 245, the mm -hmm. 140, the 307, yep. those, and then you include that one and the zero mm -hmm. in the, to the west, mm -hmm. and then you go up North Pleasant Street and you include the things on the west side of North Pleasant Street, which mm -hmm. it would also get into some of those um, neighborhoods like Puffton. So the, all yeah. that is students. Then, that's another all, piece of students. Yeah, that's all students. And but there's then, also but there's also residential along there. No, not much. Not no. much. But can but can no. there's more residential than the dorms? No. 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 All can that we, all that ninety five percent is students. Along right. Governor's Drive and between Eastman Lane. That's very, that's a lot of student rentals, yes. No, but I'm saying if you go up North Pleasant towards North Amherst, I mean, yes. we need to figure out some that aren't just dorms. The, the, at this moment, all the houses being bought and sold there are converted to student rentals. Most I mean, I know, I know, or, I know families who live in that area, but okay. Yeah, I live in that area. Uh, also. <laughs> so. Right, and I, are, are we assuming, uh, Irina, and I'm, I'm not, you know, trying to, to say this isn't you know true or what have you but are we assuming those are all student rentals or do we know for sure you know because no, those are there's no, there's, no, there's no way of knowing for sure but um if along north pleasant street okay right but, now, go ahead yeah right now along north pleasant street most, um, if you drive by, um, most are, there's a lot of student uh, rentals. Like, um, I, I can, I can, map, I can map the rental data. But what I'm that saying is that, week. what I'm saying is that we do need I'd to, like that, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But we <laughs> also do. need to find, but I think we need to create some, I mean, I hear what you're saying, but I mean, this whole section if you're saying the residential part, the non-dorm part of this area is all students, and then the dorms are all students, like we're trying to create, we, I mean, I feel like we need to create something with that neighborhood west and north pleasant, and then you can go up and try to, I mean, in your mind, when, when do actual, where, where is home ownership start, like our owner occupancy start? So from north pleasant, I mean, east? mainly north of um Hobart lane so this weekly line yes right in this area um yeah, yeah. no and this so north of uh, Hobart lane east of north pleasant street that's right the higher I mean, density of owner occupied in the area. Okay, and I, I just want to talk about language here, unless okay. we have some um, actual data to okay. support. When you say um, owner occupied, that no. is uh, right. So, so what I'm, what I'm trying to say, and I think you know where I'm going, yeah, yeah. is that you know there are families that rent here because they are unable to purchase and be owner occupants. No, and I so, unless we have some some data to say that these are simply students, um, you know, all living together that we're assuming in in you know some okay. rental property i would rather us be specific in that language because okay. from a person because that's potential voters is what i'm trying to no, really I, get at i know I, I i i understand that maybe okay. my language is not right my language is student rental properties but I'm okay saying that's a mainly so for example the the complex that is um i know by by the bus routes right i know where the kids the bus routes uh, north village that was north village but the, the, that bus stop is gone but they, there is a, a the coast development the north the coast the mill 
district. Right, the mill district, yeah. Now it's a rental area, but there are a lot of families living True. there. Um, on the on the complex that is behind Cumberland Farms, there's a lot of families living there. Um, so, I mean, I guess one thing is we look at this cluster here that's got a lot of density, right? And I know just from playing with the numbers is that we're, we need to split up this density here and around Eastman Lane, like these clusters. And so if we're trying to create some precincts that will also have more diver, more diversity in terms of family types and students, non-students and things, where, so where do those, so one, we need to split up that cluster with the North residential area and the Northeast residential area, those ones, you know, the ones up on Eastman Lane, but then we need to connect those with adjacent um, census blocks that we're going to create a precinct. So my, I mean, my question is, and we can't have them all in one cluster, we wouldn't want to anyway, because it would be all students, but what what are the most natural ways to split them and then also i mean i feel like we do need to have one that's going to be in the north going up to the northwest corner of amherst right so i mean we don't have that much left up there but i mean there needs to be we need to split up that whole north residential area and northeast residential area and so how would you, Irina, how would you, if you're concerned and you're saying that, you know, one side of that main street is mainly students, like how do we One way those? would be to take Peggy's suggestion. I think Craig has his hand up. Um, um, yeah. Maybe in this case would be one case that we can expand a bit, go towards the east instead of going towards the west. Craig, you have your hand up. I, I'm looking at Eastman Lane. I, you know, I don't think there's any question that those are dormitories. They are, yes. Yeah. And 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 if we go north from where we are right here, encompass the dormitories, then we've got a solid block of of students again. And that whole area becomes a number of precincts that are all students. If if we we maybe we can capture a little bit of this, but we need to go south to get away from having another solid block of students. Because when we start trying to get break it up into districts, it, 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 they've got to be contigu contiguous but, also. But where south, do we go, where do we go south from Eastman Lane, I guess, right? I, so, I would go east. So, but then we're still splitting, like you would split around like on say on North Pleasant Street and you would say North Pleasant Street East, but then you still have the issue of what's on the, What's on the west side of North Pleasant Street? But then we can connect it with other precincts. So if we split the student population, that doesn't sound right. But if we split the heavily student population into in this area into two, so that um, my suggestion would be in this area to start splitting the. We have a core that is mainly the center. You must we cannot split. The doors because right. the census blocks are too big. But once we start moving a little bit out, my idea would be to start splitting and mixing with uh, what we know are okay. not non-student rentals. So then the the second like the second core would be a mixture and then um, so like for example take the ones that are the cluster of the dorms, the Northeast dorms that are the ones on the south side of, yeah, right, or whatever. I mean, that's of Eastman Lane, I guess, on you. Right here. Right, so you, we could take those and then we could go west with those, but then- I would say east. I mean, east, sorry, I meant east. But then you're still, we're still gonna have the issue about I mean, you could even include the zero and the, the zero, zero, one, and then go east around yeah. there, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, sure. We could try it. I mean, some of these zeros and stuff could connect for the contiguous. We could also connect them to some of the adjacent ones. <laughs> I would, um, Mike, I would not put all the zeros on the left because 
I would leave the zero so that we can use for connectivity. The, I would leave the this zero zero and one without the, any assignation so that we can use it afterwards if we need to. Oh, I see. One oh, right, right. For the um, districts, for the districts. Yes. So, so leave this, leave the one. Okay, because I was assuming we were adding this one in. So leave the one out and here. That, the one and the two zeros. Yeah, the one right. and the two zeros. So then, okay. so then we can use those because they to for geography. Okay. Okay. So we're going over here, right? Right. Yeah. Okay, and then so that's that puts us at negative sixty. We're down sixty people from it from the average. Wait, does that? I think that 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 you must. I think somebody's double counting. Are you double counting some? Because that wouldn't have added up to that much. We were the only two, down the two forty five, one forty three, oh seven. What that wouldn't add up to the twenty, whatever you have. Did it get added to the I think hearing? It got oh, added. are we were we creating were we creating a new district or yes. a new precinct or are we adding to it? An, I think we were one? creating a new precinct. Oh, that's what I thought. Oh, that that's right? my mistake. That's my mistake. I'm sorry. I I thought we were talking about how to extend the Fearing Street block that we were working on. I I got confused there. So we want we were creating another one, another precinct that was kind of starting here and working its way east. Is that correct? Yeah, I don't think we had figured out fearing stuff yet. So I have a question, Mike. Precinct yes. four, can you highlight precinct four at this moment? Precinct four is right here. So I have a suggestion at this moment. Um, we have five precincts, right? That we could use these five that are mainly students, I think. No, because we have that one that goes the precinct three, it goes all the way down to Northampton Road. Okay, except that one. Whether we could use this as we starting point uh, as our first core of precincts and then start adding a second layer afterwards. I don't know if it makes sense or not. Hey, what do you mean by second layer? I don't understand. I, I'm saying we have five precincts that we could, in my mind, what I'm thinking is, can we use these five precincts a starting point of districts. I'm going one step. I know that we said not to do this. No, I think we shouldn't. We shouldn't do districts until we get to the precincts. Yeah. Okay. And, and we want three. We want three precincts for district. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. So let me let, let me redraw, redraw this. So. So I think we just left fearing and all those. That's not actually a thing anymore, but. Well, yeah. Well, we started it, but no, we just didn't finish we didn't it. Finish so, how it. far east do we want to go? Northeast I mean, I don't even know. I'm thinking All the way to Northeast need, Street. I think we need to go to Village Park, which is 419. That's the 419 yes. right here. Yes. So, I would, I would say this block, the 18 to 61, 93, yeah, 419. The, yeah. yeah, that's good. And now I have a question though what's happening to them with the dorms? The, 390 the 333 the 394 and the 143 they're like kind of abandoned no they're in precinct five they're in the fearing street one. Oh, okay i just want to point out it's almost 6 45 and we yeah. still need to leave five minutes for um, public comment at the end yeah. so we have about 10 more minutes so that is Thank down you. sick that going east we're 600 people down so further east, right? For, further east there's uh, not much <laughs> are going are going north maybe what so if you look right here there's another dorm that's right here on the north side of eastman that has 657 people in it mm -hmm. so i would add that one <laughs> well actually this is an error there's 350 people here 350 people here and 350 people in this one that has zero right. okay so it's like these um so but then we're having we have a lot of dorms then can we uh, what if we go south like yeah. across strong street yeah that one okay so one thing we have to be conscious of too is creating like weird shapes yes so you know here we have like a little jut i don't know if that will be considered an issue for the state but they do pay attention to irregular shapes so 
if we have something that like wraps around here and goes down south, you know, they oh, could yeah. they could see this as a red flag. I'm not saying they will, but they could. At the same time, these are such a big numbers. So what if in precinct four, we don't have it go all the way down the, what if we leave out the 114 and the 120? Can we do it and then add more? Yeah, and then we could add the door, like the 143, or we could add stuff going to the northwest or something. Because yeah. then the then the one for at least take out the one twenty, I guess, out of there, and then try to in the sixty six. If the one twenty comes out, the sixty six has mm -hmm. to come out. Oh right, yeah. But then you could put the one forty three in it. Right. And it would be like yeah, a but that's less how we weird. started. Yeah, that's oh, gonna be weird shape. <laughs> Isn't this well, fun? It's hard with the clusters of the dorms. Yeah, that's why on the states map, the the original states fifteen map, they had a they had a really if you go back and you review it, they had a really weird, um, I think they called it like a finger sticking out of it, and it was they like put Harlow Drive <laughs> and a few other of these. They put these in an, a precinct that was majority on the east side of east. And then they put this 444 and a bunch of other things in here. So it looked, the state's map probably would have gotten rejected by the state um, if they <laughs> no, were to submit I mean, it to themselves. I think, so. this, I think this block is big enough. That well, I don't think. No, but it's only 2,000. So no, no I'm, saying that, no, I'm saying that the shape of this is not a finger. It's not one little piece. Mm -hmm. I think but if we go, But if we go down, more, right. it could be seen as what was. I'm not saying it would be. I'm just saying it could. Be. I think the issue is just that you have the 1265 and the 391, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, they're always going to kind of jut out. <laughs> I think. I mean, I guess we have. We'd have to keep going west, but we need to make up 600. And the, I mean, sorry, east. And then you have that super long. I think the only way one is on to the go east side south. To go south. Yep, that area. Or oh, wait, can you slide north? There was a little bit. We could go a little bit north and a little bit south, but it would start being with weird shapes. We have the 16, 178. These are weird shape blocks. <laughs> 97. Well, um, can yeah, Mike? Can you scroll up a little? Yeah. I mean, we could fill in. What if we do that whole like division up to the East Pleasant Street, like the 87, 30, and you stop there? Because no, that's a lot of residential. Yeah, but uh, uh, Tracy, that would happen that then we wouldn't be able to farm, form a precinct on the north because the population density going north is very low. So low. Uh, so <laughs> then we would not have a way of feeling a, a population. I'm even concerned that. Um, well, and what if we couldn't we have like one? Um, precinct couldn't we just have one north precinct like north amherst precinct that goes across maybe like how one maybe and two is split now or something and we're still we should, gonna go just should okay. go all the way up north and try and and form a precinct up there yeah. but we also we, yeah before we, we abandon it and then <laughs> yeah, or find to, out that we've now it. we also have the issue that we still have the density of the dorms on the north of Eastman Lane, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. significant. It's like another. Um, oh yeah, it's yeah. You can't. We've got a that's seven hundred and on the north side of Eastman Lane, there's um a, there's eighteen hundred people in there. So, so we, I think we're also going to want, I mean, the idea that I'd had was to connect those to the east because to get out of like the dorm student area. Yeah, but by the shape of, um, to do that, we need to use this zero and this 18 and this 261, right? In order not to get- uh, Right, I know, which is, it gets complicated. But we're going to, I mean, the, I mean, that's, 
we're still going to need to put those those dorms on the north side somewhere. Where do those connect with? So that's I'm just looking at how they did it back when, um, and it it's kind of interesting. They took some of yeah they took some of these dorms north of Eastman Lane and then connected them up to the Van Meter Drive yeah. um, neighborhood. Yeah. So there's a, you know, that's a nice combination there. And then the other, well, I guess the, then the not dorms, but much of the student housing is in precinct one. And that passed muster last time. So maybe we can get away with it again this time. <laughs> I mean, there, I mean, there's not that much we can do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it's 6.51. Um, I'm trying to look at the agenda. Um, so we, we need to, f we have four more minutes to discuss and then we would be adjourning our meeting. No, I mean, um, it's so hard to... with <laughs> when with, there's so much work to do. So how do we proceed from this point? One option is that um, each of us try to look at different areas, trying to do similar exercise as Tracy did for different areas and try to see if a couple of people could try to see if we can divvy up in some way the north and some way towards the south because those are or maybe enough. i mean could we just maybe focus on north like north of the center of town and like how we think we can make stuff work a little bit okay i don't maybe know I, mike... it's just a suggestion but and if mike can <laughs> share like what he has or something yeah if mike could share it to <laughs> each of us and we can all play individually and we'll come up with a lots of different answers, but maybe combine them next time. And I think yeah. Peggy has a good point about the districts that current, I mean, the precincts that currently exist, right? Like with precinct one and things, I don't know. I mean, I don't think there's that been that many changes there. So maybe we just try to keep some of that though we know the the issues, you know, related to it not being as diverse as we would like. But. Mike, the um, that bottom chart that shows the um, deep, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I'm trying to take a screenshot. Of. Oh yeah, I, no, don't worry, D. I'll blow it up. To, I'll blow it up. What are you? What are you hoping to get? Yeah, just to see what's already established with what um, you know difference in in terms of the sure. five percent deviance. Yes. So um, what I can do is I can put together like a little map of this um, and put those statistics on the map just of, hey, when we stop this this meeting on this date, this is what we had as like a working set. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is total population. This is the um, plus or minus from the average. And then this is the, the percent difference when compared to the average. So I'll put that in a in a chart so that you don't have to take a screenshot of it. And um, Mike, I will, I'm gonna ask, um, can we, I think that would be the second step um, after we have, we should look at some of the demographics mm -hmm. on this. So oh. link, link that these census blocks to the, the census data to look a little bit about the demographics. Right, okay. Um, Actually, I have a related question to that. Sure. Um, so, you know, at the last meeting, it came up, you know, related to certain immigrant communities and things like that, right? And that some of that data is in like ancestry and foreign born and all those things. Are all those statistics supposed to be coming out um, September 30th or do one no, come out sooner? I, or will I they come out later? <laughs> probably <laughs> later, most okay. likely later. I, I, I don't know for certain, but I know September 30th, we might see like some socioeconomic data. Um, we might see like a total count of households, you know, uh, there's no way to be certain, but it's typically quite a while when you start to get like 
all the really valuable census data. It can be okay. like a year, a year or so after they start publishing the okay the raw stuff. So we won't get that like in I'm the not data. saying we won't. No, I'm not saying I mean, we won't. Yeah, I yeah. would not expect it. Yeah. So we are at five to seven, so I would like to start wrapping up. I have two suggestions that people can say yes or no. One is that to give us everybody homework to maybe pick and choose areas or we can decide to go for a north or south or um, to start playing the same way that Tracy did, um, how we can put things together. Um, but I would like to see some diversity on how people approach because I, don't, I think um, it would be good to see how Mm -hmm. different ideas come up and they say okay I had this idea and you had this other one and then do they match they don't match and maybe it's an alternative we hadn't thought so that would be one thing to look at and the other one that I want to point out is I want to see that we always um, have kind of a timeline um, what's the horizon so if we come back by October 15th, we have to be submit, the council has to have a map and a report in place so that they can study and they can vote. Ideally, we would like before that to have public input, I think. And also we would need at least one week. Uh, we would like the states to take a look at this. Um, so in my mind, that means that by the end of September, that's by when I, we would like to have the precincts drawn. That's the latest, so that we could have an iteration with the state. But ideally, maybe what I'm talking, I hadn't thought this through, maybe even the week before, because if the state comes with no, that doesn't work, we're going to have to meet again and redraw precincts if they have um, objections to our map. So we need to have at least a couple of weeks before we submit uh, to the council. And then we'd mm -hmm. like to have a response from the state if they're gonna give us uh, a response. So then essentially, yeah, one second. I think essentially we have two meetings to finalize the maps in principle, right? Uh, so that's why I'm gonna ask everybody play around with the numbers. Uh, so that next time we can get the ball rolling as much as we can from the beginning. Uh, Tracy, you had your hand up and I don't know if somebody- Oh yeah, my question was just about when we're um, sending our memo um, to the council. I mean, I guess we need to send a memo and a map to the council. It has right. to be before so, October 15th. Now, do we have to send like everything to the council at that time, including like a memo writing it up or just like our outline of our map? I guess, what does the council need by the 15th? I but, think the map. Um, uh, there was but, on the email, but my, my belief is uh, the town has to approve the map. But then also, I guess, just thinking about um if we think we're going to have the districts by the 15th i'm guessing that we're gonna have to have something even if we're gonna have to have them even though we are not required because we need to make sure that we can build districts that are within five percent of each other right um right now that's a that's a our own hard stop that the state mandates also that the district's awards have to be within 5%. So if we end up having all precincts that are under the average together, grouped together, we will never be able to satisfy the 5%, right? We have to have a mixture. So from my point of view, we have to have everything. Craig? Can I suggest that we uh, do our homework and, and send it, our assumptions to Mike ahead of time so that he has an opportunity to layer them and maybe play with them a little bit so that when we come back, he will have it all together for us to look at. Um, Mike? What you can do, you do that. You can definitely do that. The problem would be the timing there. I would, yes. I would, need, I would need to have it very soon in order to be able to build build things out um, ahead of the meeting um, since we're meeting every week. Um, but 
you can what definitely it, you can definitely do that. What, um, you can definitely email me suggestions, and I could build out a scenario like this ahead of time. I have, you're gonna hate me for saying this. If you were to get by Monday morning several suggestions, would you be able to build them up before the meeting? Our next meeting, this is a reminder. Our next meeting, I believe, is um, Wednesday. It's Wednesday at six. Yes, um, at six. If I had stuff, it depends on how much I had by Monday morning. But if I had, if I had like three plans by Monday morning, I could, I could get them all done by Wednesday. If I had seven plans, no. But if I had no, I, I guess one thing is if we're building stuff out, like um, for the precincts that we had already started to create, do are there any that we are comfortable leaving as like draft precincts right now, and not continuing to fiddle with? Do you know what I mean? Like, can we say that of our fifteen precincts, there's like three or four that we feel like these are a good starting place, and we're going to try to move other stuff around? What do people think? Well, we've only built six, and I think. Well, and six, I mean, they're not all done, right? I yeah, think we three only of have them like are not. I'd or... say only three are done, and three are not done. Okay. So, yeah. all right. I'd rather leave it open for the exercise of us each taking a look yeah, at it. Yeah, no, of course. Um, I also have a question for you, Mike. When you give us access to the map, it's not shared, right? So we're each doing our own version, or is it shared? It, you would each be doing your own version. Okay. It's not shared. Yeah, that would be an open meeting wall. Oh, okay. Probably. Okay. And and we don't have this tool, right? We're just doing no. it on paper or however we can figure out how to do it. Okay. That's I'm, what I did. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to get by the time we buy the tool, it will probably be <laughs> the end of September. Right, yeah. right. Um, okay. 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 But if um, you can, can you send them this map, the whole yes. town map in a good um, yes. way so that we can read the numbers? Yes, absolutely. And maybe we draw on top of it with a pen or well, and the inter colored the, pens. The interactive map, that's what I, I was using the interactive map and taking like screenshots and printouts and then playing with mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so um, I believe we don't have any attendees at this moment. Um, it, um, so public comment, any of the non-voting, anybody wants to make any announcement, any comments? I, I guess so with the map, do we, do we wanna agree that we wanna look at one part like north or something and just sort of finish or something i mean i don't know it's hard we can't go through the whole town in one meeting i guess do, do people have thoughts about that i would i would suggest that the difficult part of this town is figuring out how to diversify the precincts around umass right so i think that's where we need to focus and i and of course we need to keep an eye on the fact that once we draw these things, the precincts on the edges will be determined, but um, but it feels to me like we have to work from UMass outwards. Right. Yeah. Well, and the ones that we haven't assigned yet, right? The like the 2000 students who aren't assigned to a precinct yet, the ones near Eastman. Right. Do, do okay. we take into consideration at all the new buildings that are being put in, or is that the state just doesn't care about that? We, I mean, we need to think of it, but it, it still doesn't matter if they're not, if the state's not considering it, should we be thinking of it? I think in part we should be thinking of it then, but we cannot officially, um, one way would be that those precincts would have to be on from the average down. Um, that's the only way I can think that we can take them into account. That potential um, impact is that we have to have them on the average down. That's but the like, only thing. But since nothing is on paper until people move in, we cannot. Well, and so that's one thing I was thinking about too with north of, north of UMass, right? So North Village is empty right now. So it wasn't empty in 2020. And it had all that population attached to it, whatever it was, like 
but the, those people aren't there anymore, but we're still gonna count them as if they are because that's what the census has. I mean, in terms of the counts and in terms of the 5%, we're using the numbers that the 2020 census tells us. Yeah. As much as we wanna think about everything else. Could we use those the, to justify um, why we're high or low in the percentage from the average? I'm also thinking of the errors. Um, I, yeah. I, yeah. Are they, I mean, they're not going to approve errors in time for no. what we're doing. No. I think what we can do is we can build the precincts the best we can and then find a just based on the information that we gather in the previous meetings, the issues that we know that the developments are coming and the areas that we thought that were undercounting and then move some boundary lines based on the information that we have, but just to, uh, to account for those variations. So wait, so by your calendar, we were saying that we want to have the precincts all drafted by what, three uh, meetings, is that right? Yeah. Three meetings. And then yes. that would give us, that would give us like one or two meetings, well, one to check with the state and then also try to come up with some districts. Yes. So three so, more meetings. Three more <laughs> meetings. Okay. okay let's do we it. Let's every, do it in one. <laughs> yeah, I'm for it. Like, let's try. Uh -huh. So, but so that's why, as much as we can do outside and play with numbers, I'll send it to Mike, and that's the best. Okay. Great. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Almost in time. Oh, Almost on time. Oh, do we want to make a motion and adjourn? Yeah. I move to adjourn. Second. Second. Um, I'm gonna run call Craig Meadows. Hi. Uh, Peggy Shannon. Aye. Tommy Parks. Aye. Tracy Safian. Aye. Maja Kelani. Aye. Irene Hovne. Aye. Uh, meeting adjourned. All right. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Next week. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Bye.